uh, we would like to give you a bit of an introduction and some context to uh, who we are and why we are here. Um, we are the BD School and uh, um, we are, of course, an educational platform for business development. And the reason why we exist is because we realized about uh, three and a half years ago that business development is a bit problematic in the sense that people that work in it often are not really aware of what they uh, have to do. It seems to be a very confusing uh, field to work on. On top of that, often our companies don't offer us training, so we're left a little bit uh, uh, alone. I was in that situation for a long time. I worked now in business development for about uh, 14 years, um, but I was I really struggled a lot, and that's really what uh, convinced me to start uh, sharing my knowledge. And then uh, in the process, I was lucky enough to find a lot of other business developers that contributed to uh, making the BD School what is uh, uh, today. So going more in detail on what is competitor analysis. So when we do our competitor analysis, what we're doing is basically, basically uh, identifying on one end our competitors, but then we want to evaluate their strategies in order to uh, understand better where their strengths, their weaknesses compared to uh, ours, right? So the ones of what we, have, uh, uh, what we have to offer. And this of course is a great exercise uh, um, for many reasons, because as I mentioned before, it can give you a lot of ideas to, uh, you know, change things around, uh, uh, identify new opportunities and so on. We're going to see later on some examples of really like uh, how we can use uh, our competitors at our advantage. But yeah, of course, first thing, like no more panic, uh, but more like a scientific approach to understanding our competitors and uh, uh, using them to our, uh, to our advantage. Now, uh, who is a competitor? Because of course, like not all companies are competitors, not all the companies that offer something similar, we should consider them as direct competitors. When we are analyzing our competitors, we can use this matrix and we can put on one side, you know, like the type of audience that this, uh, um, these companies have and we have and uh, the capabilities of this company in terms of like uh, resources, for example, uh, both financial, human resources, and so on. Now, on one end, we're gonna have competitors which are direct competitors that do exactly the same thing as we do, a similar business model, similar audience, and so on. So this type of companies, for example, uh, I use your McDonald's and Burger King because I think everybody in all the sides of the world uh, know them. Them, they're direct competitors because they do exactly the same thing. Their audience is the same, people that like to eat fast food. Uh, so, you know, they're directly in competition. Um, and we have companies that share our same audience but uh, they don't have the same capabilities. Maybe they have like a different product. But for example, McDonald's and Domino's, they have the same audience because we're still like the ones that like to eat uh, uh, fast food, but uh, one offers pizza, the other one burger. Paradoxically, uh, before you choose whether you want McDonald's or Burger King, you actually choose whether you want pizza or, Mac or, or burger, right? So uh, you actually like first consider the indirect competitors and then maybe the direct competitors. Then you have um, companies that you know have similar capabilities, but they don't share the same audience yet, right? So it could be, for example, local chains, so, like they have local audiences, but these can be potential competitors both on the local market or if they decide to expand to other places, for example. So these ones are, let's say, the upcoming competitors, the future competitors that we still need to keep uh, uh, an eye on. Maybe less than the other ones, and they're definitely less of a threat compared to direct competitors or indirect competitors, but we still need to uh, have a look at them. And then, of course, if we don't share absolutely anything with the other company, uh, then in that case, uh, we're just not uh, competitors. So you can use uh, um, this, uh, uh, basically, this uh, uh, first matrix in order to identify, you know, and to put on a map and visualize your uh, competitors. Now, uh, what is the process of this competitor analysis? How can we simplify it? How can we make it easy, fast, you know, so that we don't uh, waste too much time on uh, analyzing our competitors, but we always have an eye on them? Uh, we can break it down into three major steps. So the first one is to uh, the identification. So really identify who are our competitors, both direct and indirect. Then we want to analyze them because we need to see, you know, like what's happening, who are they, what do they do, and really go in the details of things. And then we have uh, the assessment. So at some point, we need to decide, OK, how do we benchmark with, this, uh, uh, with these competitors? Let's go to the first one, which is to identify our competitors. So how do we identify them? So first, 
we can do a market research. Market research is really analyzing the market in uh, uh, all its uh, uh, greatness. Uh, and there, of course, we're going to start looking into all the players of the market. So not only our competitors, but we're going to look at institutions and so on. If you don't know how to do market research, we also have a webinar for that on our platform. Of course, then we can use Google. Like, obviously, Google search is the uh, most effective way to look at competitors. There we want to look at uh, uh, either we really type like exactly the same product and service and then we see what appears on the uh, on Google search or we can start you know getting creative with the other keywords that are related to what we do because then we can really see like the up and coming uh, competitors we can use social media of course we can also see what your customers are looking at right so of course you're not the only one so if they're considering taking your service or product most likely they're evaluating also other ones so you can check what uh, um, what they're doing what type of pages they follow on social media and then of course you can use your customers feedbacks especially if you're doing a lot of calls with potential clients or partners um, most of them they are looking at other things you can just ask them like what are you looking at you know what other options are you considering um, sometimes you know of course it always depends you need to read a little bit the room because some people can take it as a you know um, almost as an offense but you can always ask like gentles like look you mentioned you're considering another company uh, would you mind telling me which one it is and then once you have that you can build your objection because you you're gonna know at some point what is uh, uh, good about this company and what is bad. Once you made all this list of competitors, which is going to be anywhere between one and a thousand, but of course we don't have to analyze uh, all the thousands, we need to start really um, having a very deep look at who are these uh, uh, competitors. There are a few elements that we need to look at. So the first one is relevant people. Knowing that these people you know, have different resources also helps me put things in perspective and say, okay, uh, they're here in terms of money or an experience we're here so obviously we cannot uh, uh, have like the same expectations or ambitions we need to tailor it to our own uh, case so in one end like it kind of reassures you but it definitely helps you build realistic uh, expectations so the first part of the competitor analysis is really a sort of id of this company where you want to know about the people when the company was established you know so you can start you know taking a bit of a measure then the second important part is obviously uh, product and services, and I would add revenue also here. Product and services, and I'm not talking only, oh yeah, they also offer a, a course on business development where they have a platform. Now, what I would do is really like analyzing each product and each service to the minimum detail to see like how they position it what type of features does this course have like how long is it and uh, on the platform like what type of content would they find so it's really about you know understanding really in the um, minimum detail how they package their offer the product and services and then you're just making the list of uh, uh, exactly everything you find on their websites the other thing we need to look at is the value proposition. So the value proposition is basically the uh, promise of value that uh, the company gives you if you choose to work with them. So if you work with us, you get this and this result. So simple. Uh, we want to look at the value proposition because that also tells us a lot. It tells us a story about, you know, what they consider important. You know, knowing how the other companies, how your competitors position themselves is really going to help you differentiate and reinforce your uh, identity. Then we want to look at the marketing channels. So obviously we want to know where it is that they distribute their product and service. Um, and then we, of course, we want to take advantage of, uh, uh, of them. But then again, this gives us a lot of insights into their audience, right? What type of audience are they talking to? So it also tells us a lot about the strategy behind the company. So where do they want to go and how do they want to get there? Because I mean, obviously like uh, if you're a founder, uh, your job is to make sure that you have a winning strategy. But as a business developer, it's exactly the same. You want to be in the places where you can get the highest results, right? And your competitors can give away a lot of information uh, on how to do that more efficiently or not. And then again, in that sense, you can come up with ideas that you think are the winning ones. And then the last one that is really qualitative as a, an analysis is looking at the customer feedback. So have a look at Google reviews or maybe Trustpilot or G2 Crowd or like, you know, there's so many uh, places when people can leave reviews, product hunt, check what their customers are talking about. So um, 
hopefully they have a lot of good reviews because obviously you're going to ask your best customers to leave your reviews so you have mainly good ones but people are really um you know they're not going to keep it if you treat them badly if you treat them badly they're definitely going to leave you a bad review and those are the ones that you have to look for mainly so also the good ones because of course you need to see um what their audience values the most about your competitor but you also want to look at what they don't appreciate about this company because these are all opportunities right again your competitors and their customers are giving it away to you so you just need to be there and look at them and then you know just analyze think a little bit and say oh, okay actually this is a good opportunity maybe we should do something with it with this uh, piece of uh, information then last one last step and we cannot simplify more than that is to assess your competitors because of course now that we know who they are we found like tons of them we know how they operate we know their value propositions we know their products we need to say okay um are they really a threat or not? So how do we assess this data? So first we need to organize the data. Again, I mentioned like creating a spreadsheet or like any other tool that you uh, prefer, but definitely spreadsheets. I think they're always uh, uh, the easiest uh, uh, thing. You need to benchmark yourself. So uh, you need to put down everything about you and then you really need to sort of say, oh yeah, uh, you can even mark them in green, for example, all the things that you're good at, you can mark them in green, the things that uh, not so much orange, and then the things that you're really bad at compared to your competitors, you want to put them in uh, in red because the exercise we need to do is really to start identifying our strengths weaknesses um, and of course assessing the opportunities and threats and if you uh, recognize these words you also know where i'm going next the tool that you can use to do this is the swot analysis because the swot analysis is a really good representation like it's uh, schematic it's very simple like it's very visual so you can very quickly list down like all the things that you're good at in the strength, like maybe you have more resources, maybe you have an innovative business model, you have a better customer service, you have a better leadership, better everything. So here you want to list down like from your file, from your competitor analysis, you want to take all the green ones and say, oh yeah, but you know, like we're really good at, um, you know, uh, customer service because when customers arrive to us, we really take care of them and so on. Keep in mind that the strengths, they're all internal things, right? So these are things that you have control on. So they're things that belong to your company uh, and that you can use, you know, that you should exploit even more, that you should capitalize on. Of course, we cannot uh, um, close our eyes with our weaknesses, right? That would be really stupid and it would be really counterproductive. Um, and again, it's one of the pitfalls of uh, uh, competitor analysis. So here we really want to list down all the red things in our list and say, okay, these are all the things that our competitors are doing better. Would they have a better, um, they have more features on the platform or they have more payment uh, uh, methods, which means they can have customers from many sides of the world. The important is that here, again, we don't put the, uh, our hand uh, in the sand um, because it's not that we're gonna stop our competitors. Like they're just gonna keep being really good at that thing and we're not gonna do anything about that. So again, these first two parts of the SWOT analysis, of course, are really internal. So it's really about you and your competitors and you versus your competitors. But then, of course, we need to start looking at, we need to start building our opportunities list, right? So which are all these external elements that we can use at our advantage, which don't depend necessarily on us, right? So for example, if the customer service of our competitors is bad, we have no control over that, right? But it's a huge opportunity for us because again, we can just increase our level of service and our customers or potential customer will be uh, very happy. Uh, but it can be anything, right? It can be the market growth rate or new regulations and so on. In the same way, of course, there are gonna be some threats, uh, which could be, for example, a dying industry. Uh, in our case, for example, if we think in terms of ed tech, so uh, education tech, uh, one thing which we don't really believe in and we see that is declining actually is purely e-learning, right? So people want to have say, some human touch, you know, that's why most of the ed tech companies, they went from just offering video courses that you can take at your own time to actually having cohorts based, right? So groups, classes where you can go and you meet other people, you have peer-to-peer -peer, uh, knowledge sharing and so on, right? So this could be uh, one threat, right? So if you don't adapt quickly enough, 
that you're going to die. But basically this, you know, doing the SWOT analysis based on your competitors can really uh, highlight a lot of opportunities. I mean, of course, the list should be um, long enough for you to uh, have enough things to work on, but it can be a really good tool to help you out and really assess, you know, what is really good and bad uh, between you and your competitors and how you can use this information. Thank you.